So back when I was a clueless freshman, I was on a desperate mission to land a job, any job. I applied to hundreds of internships on Indeed, and just to give myself a realistic chance of actually getting one of them, I only applied to random companies I'd never heard of, which included some financial services company called Two Sigma. And somehow I made it all the way to the on-site interviews only to get sent home early during the lunch break. And guess what? The same thing happened the following year as well. However, in my junior year, at basically the last second, I decided to give it another shot and I finally got the internship. But before I tell you how, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, so when I first applied to Two Sigma, I applied to their freshman software engineering internship without any idea of what I was getting myself into. I didn't think much of it at the time until they gave me a HackerRank assessment to test my knowledge of object-oriented programming. This eventually led to a questionnaire about my background in CS, and the next step after this was a proctored can't be serious. And the next step after this was a proctored code signal assessment. So after they reviewed all of this, for some reason, they decided to fly me out for my first ever on-site interview. However, I knew I was completely unprepared because up to that point, the assessment surprisingly didn't test anything beyond like arrays, for loops, strings, you know, the basics. Maybe the problems were kind of challenging, but the concepts were simple. So once I started taking data structures at school, I realized how much I didn't know. So I was in the hotel trying to figure out what a tree was and what a graph was until like four or 5 a.m. And unsurprisingly, when they saw that I knew nothing about trees and graphs, the next day, the recruiter walked up to me and sent me home during lunch break. And yeah, that sucks, I know. But I met Mark Ruffalo right after, so I guess it wasn't the biggest waste of time after all. So obviously, by the time that I interviewed with them again during my sophomore year, I had taken data structures and done a good amount of leak code. But this time I had to go through their regular software engineering interviews, not the freshman one. The interviews this time kicked off with a phone screen, which was a 45 minute technical interview. I remember this one started off kind of rough because First, she asked me to define latency and throughput, and I tried my best, but I did pretty poorly. So then she asked me if I had taken any computer systems courses yet, and I was like, no, but I'm going to next semester. And then we moved on to um, a coding question. I don't really remember what she asked me to do, but it had something to do with um, using randomness to simulate certain situations, which was really fun. And I guess she liked me enough to move me onto the onsite, where once again, I did really poorly. So after I had three rounds of I'd say harder, medium level lead code questions. I got rejected once again during the lunch break. All right, so now we have reached my third year, uh, my junior year. So for some context about this recruiting season, my main goal was to actually try something new and ideally get a quant trading internship. But unfortunately, by the end of September, I was rejected from all the quant jobs that I had applied to. And it was looking likely that I would accept my return offer at Facebook, which expired in two weeks. But because I really, really wanted to try something new over the summer, I decided to email all the firms that rejected me for quant trading and beg them to interview me for software engineering instead within those two weeks. And this is where my previous interview experiences come in. So in the process of failing those two on-sites, I slowly collected more and more emails from two Sigma recruiters. And because I felt like I had nothing to lose, I emailed all of them a few times each and eventually one of them decided to give me a shot. Okay, so the process for the software engineering internship goes something like this. First, you have to submit a proctored code signal score. If that was good enough, then you'd be asked to do a technical interview over the phone, which as you saw earlier, could basically cover anything. And if that goes well, then you'd have to do their brutal six round onsite interviews. These six rounds consist of three technical rounds and three behavioral rounds, with each round being one hour long. Previously, I've always failed the technical rounds, so I got rejected during that lunch break in between the two parts. So obviously this process is really long and it was impossible for them to finish uh, in two weeks. But because I did a code signal for another company before, and because I did their phone screen the previous year, I was actually able to skip those two steps and just fast forward to the on-site interviews. So the day before my Facebook deadline, I had my technical on-site interviews. The first and second rounds both covered like medium difficulty graph problems. In the first round, I was given a 2D grid with some constraints, and it was pretty obvious that you'd solve the problem using breadth-first search. The second question was similar to 
on Leak Code, but instead of using a tree, the problem used a graph. The last technical interview was supposed to be really hard, I think. I think my performance on this question is what helped me stand out the most, but lots of it was due to luck. So I got pretty much the same question from another trading firm before, but I was actually given two hours to do it instead of one because it's a difficult question. So you can imagine that after I had some time to make my mistakes and reflect on them, it wasn't too hard to code up my solution in just like 15, 20 minutes, which probably came off as super impressive. And because we had a lot of time left, she asked me to write some test cases, which led to a few more minutes of fixing a small bug. And then she also asked me um, how I can make these functions thread safe and other follow-ups along those lines. So yeah, those were my technical interviews. If you remember what I said earlier, the technical and behavioral portions usually happen within the same day. But this time, they were split up into two different days, so they told me whether or not I passed the technical portion just a few hours before my behavioral interviews were scheduled. These behavioral interviews ended up being pretty standard. Um, everyone genuinely wanted to learn more about my background, but as for the types of questions you'd get, you should probably be ready for anything. Like sometimes they might grill you a little bit to make sure you know what you're talking about when it comes to what you put on your resume, but nothing too crazy. So if you're keeping up with the timeline, these behavioral interviews happened on the same day that my Facebook return offer expired. But once again, I got super lucky because I was able to uh, work around this. So when I first asked my Facebook recruiters for an extension to accommodate on sites from other companies, they wouldn't budge, understandably, but I was also interviewing for their TPM internship, and because that process was dragging on for a while, they extended the deadline for my return offer by two weeks to accommodate that. So after anxiously waiting for a week after my behavioral interview, I got an email saying that the committee wanted to extend a verbal offer, but a written offer wouldn't be given until Two Sigma leadership approved my profile. I was kind of nervous about this at first, but from what I read online, the general consensus is that this last stamp of approval is generally just a formality. So by this point, I felt like I pretty much had the offer and celebrated and moved forward as such. So like, even though I had an onsite with another trading firm in Chicago, I canceled that one because I wanted to be in New York with my friends. And I know that Two Sigma had a better culture and a similar offer. And yeah, that's basically the story about how I got my internship at Two Sigma. So what did I learn from all of this? Well, the boring answer is that I got a much better sense of the kinds of questions I like to ask, which are basically leak code style questions that either one, require uh, comfort with graphs and two, require lots of implementation. But beyond the nitty gritty details, I think my experience shows the importance of luck and persistence when it comes to recruiting. So like I got into their hiring pipeline super early because of pure luck. And this eventually helped me get in touch with the recruiters who would keep eventually giving me a chance, which eventually led to me getting interview questions that I already happened to be comfortable with. And when it comes to persistence, I think a lot of people are generally too shy to be persistent when it comes to getting the opportunity that they want. So like if you get rejected for one position, then just go for another one. If you're getting ghosted, then follow up. And if you have an expiring offer, then try extending the deadline. I think a lot can happen if you refuse to take no for an answer. And who knows, it could help you land one heck of an opportunity one day. But yeah, hope this video was helpful. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Peace.